Now we actually have to do something with that data that we're getting back. And this is where Isaac is going because this is the fun part. So first we have to learn a little bit about how form works. And so we were talking about the action before. And so just to review, it determines where the form goes to. And like I said, the empty quotes means it goes to the current page. And for example, like emma.php, whatever your name happens to be. And if you send it a different file path, you can send it to sprocketer.php or something. It's be stupid because it doesn't know how to interpret any of that data. But you could also send it to google.com or something, which wouldn't do anything with the data. You'd just sit there on the Google homepage. But that's how you do that. And then all of that goes into the dollar underscore get array. And so get comes from that uh, method that we're talking about. Remember how you guys blindly copy down method equals get? Well, that's why we're using the get array here, because you guys all put down get for the method. And so if you look down at the bottom here, I don't know if you guys noticed, but when you hit your submit button, it should automatically have come back to the page and then shown you something like this, and that there was a question mark, the name of your variable, equal to whatever you typed in. So this example is from our chapter orders database, which I'll show you guys at the end if we have time, which is a little bit of why I'm rushing. But it has all these things, first name, contact information, you know, how many chapters you want, that kind of thing. And so once I submit it, first name equals Rachel, and then and, here's another name of a variable, as well as the value I just set it to. All the way through, um, there's a whole lot, so I had to actually chop this off. But then, until the very end, are these hidden fields. So if we, if I can go back please, if we go back to where you also blindly copy down these, Remember how I told you about those hidden fields? So those are things that aren't going to show up, but they will show up in the get array with these um, values automatically already inserted. So for example, to talk about, so form name, we'll need, because that's how you check if the form has been submitted. Um, page ID is important because here, normally, if you just go to the page, uh, it'll have a question mark page underscore ID equals and then some number. And that's WordPress's way of telling of figuring out which page in the whole WordPress thing you're in. Does that make sense? So if you just return to shopresearch.com, it's not going to know where to go to get there. So this is only applicable within the context of WordPress, if you likely forget it, but one day I'll need to go back and look at these slides. And so if you try to do this sort of thing within the context of a WordPress file, It'll just send you back to the shop research homepage because it doesn't know how to find that page ID. So you have to send a page ID with it so it knows where to come back to. Does that make sense? Sort of. Yes, no? Questions? And then it'll make sense with an example, so we're getting it. So then the get array actually stores each one of these values. Of, so it's an array that would just say F name equals Rachel, and other entry is name equals Gardner, or L name equals Gardner. And so each value is stored on the name input, and it'll appear right here as we the form. So the general structure of this, we talked a little bit about functions before, um, and I told you not to use them, but that's because if you have a function here, so, so if, you don't ha if you don't have a function here, and just have something written within these It'll go through and it'll execute it just sort of in order. But the problem is, when you have a whole bunch of stuff, it gets really messy. And so that's why you have functions. So you have a little container of code here that you can call somewhere else in the PHP file. And so some people um, will even have a main function that they call at the end. So you, you have to have somewhere that you can call these functions for them to do anything. And that'll make sense. I'm getting there. So you echo whatever, so in the display form function, you would echo whatever it is you're going to have to form. That's the HTML you just wrote. Um, I can show you guys how to copy that into display form so that it all outfits. And then what do you guys think would happen in display values? How, how do we display what was just inputted into the form? Exactly. How, how do you use the value? I don't know. This is why you ask questions, guys. You have, you have to take the 
thing that was passed in? Or yeah, so know? where are the values stored now? Mm -hmm. I just yeah. submitted the form. They went into this magical array called what? Yeah. Get array. Get array. So uh, you don't know the syntax yet, <laughs> but I will show you that in a minute. Here, that's that's how you're going. Here, to access um, something in array in PHP, you got dollar underscore get, which is just the name of the array, yeah. and then square brackets, and then double quotes, and the name that you're looking for. Does that make sense? So if I wanted to output what I put in for the first name, then I would do dollar underscore get. I would do dollar underscore get and then first name, for example. Does that make sense? Yes. And so what I'm doing here is so this PHP will be called both before you submit anything and after. Does that make sense? Does everyone understand why? So you go to the page, there's nothing in there. You put stuff in there, you hit the submit button, and it comes back to the same spot. Your code has no idea if anything has been inputted or if it should just be showing you the form, right? So that's why you have these hidden fields. So it's going to check the get array, and if there is something in the get array saying the form name, then it knows the form has been submitted. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. You could technically just see if there's anything in the get array, but this is the best way to do it because it's helpful if you have a bunch of different forms all on the same page, stuff like that. Does that make sense? All right, and then, so if something's already been submitted, then you want to show the user what has been submitted. So you display value, whatever you call the function, or whether you write the code directly into here. Does that make sense? However, if it hasn't been submitted, you want to show them the empty form. And so then you execute the code at the top, echo all your HTML to show them the form. Does that make sense? You guys are about to have to do this, so if it doesn't make sense, ask now. What goes on the display value? Maybe I should have this quick. <laughs> <laughs> I can just scroll back to the screen, guys. <laughs> what goes inside the display values? OK, so uh, I didn't want to give you too much of this because of the copy. Wait, let me write this down real quick. I'm just going to paste back and forth until you can't see it. Okay. So, for displaying the value, um, you access the dollar underscore get array, and so say you have something called f name. Hopefully, you can read my handwriting. So that's how you get that variable, and then you can echo this, you can add it to things, you can stick it in a table. This is now basically a variable for you. Okay. If if it's too ugly, you can do a variable here and then just do echo of that variable. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, does that make sense? Yeah. So F name is a field or is that the name of the entire form? That, um, could that be a field in the form? So you have the whole input, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's type equals text, mm -hmm. for example. And then you had name. Yeah. That's what that is. Okay. That's what I was trying to say with the name of the variable. So this refers to this variable in the get array that you'll access. Does that make sense to everybody? Yeah? So a uh, form name in the get array is okay. Yeah, so the reason that is form name is because that's just the hidden field I use. So for example, I submitted a hidden field way back here. that have the name of this forming. Actually, you'll want to put value equals true. There's, there's a whole lot of different ways of doing this. You can check if it exists, but to use this code with the code I just showed you, you have to say value equals true. I can change that. I didn't expect you guys to copy both of them and try to use them together. Does that make sense? So you have to set the value is equal to true. Everybody good? Yes, we're about to find out. It'll make a lot more sense once you start using it. Uh, ignore this, maybe. Um, Just use double quotes. No, they're gonna use, I'm going to have you use double quotes. Ooh. They don't have to do any parsing because they're not using variables to inside. Okay, so yeah, use single quotes. I'll explain why later. Okay? <laughs> okay, um, yeah, so sorry. I, I just wanted to get this up so I wasn't off of that slide. Um, 
Mm. I'll explain it. Okay. So just I just don't want you to have to do. Okay. So and this is something particular to PHP and. I learned this the hard way, and I had to build character doing a whole bunch of escape sequences, which I'll explain in a second. But, do you guys care what board I do? Which one can you see better? Just okay. So, uh, with single, so in PHP, you can either do something in single or double quotes. So remember how you do um, echo like this, and then you have like high or something, and I told you to put it in double quotes? Well, I lied to you. You don't have to put it in double quotes. It can also be in single quotes. Um, in PHP, you can either do single or double quotes, but there's a very important difference between how it handles single versus double quotes. And so that's what I'm talking about here. So single quote, just a little quick mark, does not parse. So parse means that it's going to go back through and do fancy things with it, execute commands, stuff like that. So parsing would mean that if I wanted to do this, for example, I would have to use double quotes. Um, okay. I was going to write a sentence and that's just too long. So you can put a variable directly into echo. And with parsing, if it has double quotes, it goes back in and says, oh, dollar, score, uh, dollar name was clearly defined somewhere up here in the code that I don't have built through this. And it will replace it right here. Does that make sense? Single quotes does not do that. And so then I just explained everything else this right here. Now, the reason why you would ever want to use single quotes then is because remember when you were writing HTML and you had this? Well, what happens if you try to do echo that and then, I don't know if you can see this, there. Can someone tell me what's wrong with that? It's gonna end it. It's gonna end it right between like the exactly. and text. So echo is like okay. Right. I'm gonna echo all the way up to here, and then see this panics. <laughs> That's actually what happens in Just panics. <laughs> so um, if you've taken computer science, you might remember escape sequences where you do backslash and then something, mm -hmm. and so that's telling it that. This isn't some sort of special thing with the function. I want you to actually put a double quote right there. So that means if you want to do double quotes here, it has to use backslash, 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 and then it would work. So when I first learned, I had to do that for everything. Coach Eric made me go through my entire HTML form that I had to do in PHP, and I had to edit every single one of these with backslash. And that's because it's for this stuff, you usually want to use double quotes because you're going to go back in and do variables and move on and do fancier stuff with it. But for right now, I just want you to do PHP processing and just show this stuff. And for that, you're not going to use any variables embedded in your HTML for now. So the moral of this entire story is that I'm saving you a whole bunch of work by letting you use echo with single quotes and you don't have to use escape sequences. Does that all make sense? Yes. So welcome. Moving on, can I get to do your job? Wait, what were we supposed to do? Use single quotes for echo instead of double quotes. Okay. So, go. You're just going to um, edit it so that it now. I'll explain this when I go back to the slide. You guys will all find a safe picture, though. You're just going to output all of the data that was just put in before. It's a little silly, normally you do stuff with it or you output it prettier, but we're just going to blindly output it, maybe the name of the variable and then what you actually put into it, ignoring the fact that you can clearly see it in the add bar. Okay? And that's just to teach you how to reference those variables to do some action on them. Uh, and the quick note here is just uh, a period in PHP is the same as plus in Java in that you can concatenate them together. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry about it and just do it the long way. We do a bunch of echoes. Are we doing this in PHP or HTML? This is in PHP now, which means you're going to have to copy and paste the HTML code you wrote into your PHP document. Okay. Why did we write so, the submit form kind of thing? What do you mean? What do we need to hit in Then you can just put it back in. You can write HTML within a PHP document. Yeah. The reason I had you write it in an HTML document first was because as soon as you put it within, inside, in, within an echo, it just looks disgusting. Because remember, way back when, when I was talking about how Emacs has different modes, 
it knows the .php, and so it's trying to be super helpful, and it makes pretty colors, and it does tabbing based on you typing in PHP code. And then as soon as you throw HTML inside your PHP code, it still tries to use PHP, and it just looks gross. So that's why I wanted you to copy and paste it. Um, after round, this entire side of the room has learned copy and paste all too well, so they can help you with that. But you can select it, and then uh, just right click somewhere, and it will show up. So then going back here, this is what your general format looks like. And so fill that in and get rid of it. 